everyone. Today I'm here to talk to you about a new wizard in Mach 4 called Surface Mapping. This new feature will allow you to, well, map a surface using a probe. Why would you ever need to map a surface? A surface map could be useful if your table is not completely level or if you're trying to cut an, on an uneven surface. The wizard, using your probe, plots points in the z-plane and uses them to generate a map of your surface. In the example I'm going to show you, we're working with a very crooked piece of metal that no sane person would ever mistake for level. Before we get started, I want to point out that this feature, like many within Mach 4, requires you to have a reliable and consistent homing sequence. That is because the surface map is set up in your machine coordinate system. The values we'll be entering are all based on your machine coordinate system as well, and if you're not homing in the same place every time, your map won't be accurate. As I mentioned, the surface wizard also requires you to have a probe signal properly configured. I recommend testing it before you try mapping a surface. To open the wizard, head over to Wizards, select Wizard, MC Surface Map. As you can see, there are a lot of DROs here. Let's break them down, shall we? The black DROs are user inputs, and we'll go through those one at a time. Ymax and Ymin are the most positive and most negative points in the area you will be mapping. Remember, these values are based on your machine coordinate system. The same goes for Xmax and Xmin. Target res refers to the target resolution for each axis. In other words, how close you want your probe points to be. Y count is based on the distance between the max and min DROs for Y and Y target res. Y count will display the actual number of probe points that will take place over the travel in the Y axis. This is a read-only DRO, you can't change it. Likewise, X count shows you the actual number of probe moves that will be in the X axis based on your X min and max and the target resolution. Z max and Z min are also read-only DROs. They will display the highest and lowest probed point when you're all done. Traverse Z is where you'll enter the height you want your Z-axis to travel to when moving into position prior to a probe move. This is important. That value is in machine coordinate. If you home your Z-axis at the top of its travel, this value will be negative. Max probe dist is the maximum travel, or distance, for probing moves. Select probe is where you'll choose your probe from the available options in the drop-down. Points to go will display the total number of probe moves calculated by the wizard. Once probing starts, this DRO will count down probe hits as they occur. Map surface will begin the probing sequence. If you were watching along, I entered in my values as I was talking. Before I started recording, I found all of my max and mins in the machine coordinates and I entered the rest of my settings. Those aren't super important as you'll be using your own values when you start mapping. What you want to notice here is that the surface map sequences move down an entire row in one axis and then move on to the next. You'll also see the points to go values decreasing with each probe hit, and the Z max and Z min DROs are updating each time a new highest or lowest Z value is recorded. When the surface mapping sequence is complete, you'll see this results window appear. It shows you if there are any no touch points, which would be missed probe hits, as well as the Z min and Z max. The appearance of this window also signals that a map has been created. Here's something important to remember. If you start mapping a surface and have to stop for whatever reason, the wizard will still generate a map file. That means you need to go in and delete that file or your incomplete map will load by default and may cause you some headaches. Luckily, that's a fairly easy process and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. We're going to go to File Explorer and open our Mach 4 directory. Then we're going to go into your profile folder, open the profile that you're using and you'll see this file here, zlevelmap0.dat. That is the file that was created. If it was successful mapping, you're good to go. If it was created erroneously or a mistake was made, you can delete that and start again. What I've done here is created a spare maps folder. So if I make maps of a couple different surfaces, I can save them all and have them ready to go. Now, what we wanna do to load a file is go to configure, plugins, surface map, and then click Add Map. This will allow you to select any of the maps that you've created from your Profiles folder where we just were. Now click Apply and OK, and your map will be applied from here on out. Now let's test the effects of the surface map we just created. Watch how the tip of the probe stays at the same height away from the surface as it moves throughout the test. If you're watching closely, you may have also noticed the automatic ramp up as we leave the mapped area. That's a nice little safety feature for when you move your machine into uncharted waters. 
Now, jogging is cool and all, but let's run some code and see how surface mapping handles arcs. This has been your introduction to the surface map wizard. It will be included in the upcoming Mach 4 hobby build along with written documentation that echoes what I've told you today. Stay safe, be creative, and as always, happy CNCing!